हेलो एवरी वन सो इन आर लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट वी हैव सीन वॉट रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट इज इन ब्रीफ एंड वी हैव सीन दैट सम फिनोमिना कैन बी एक्सप्लेन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट सो इन दिस लेक्चर विल स्टडी अबाउट वन सच फिनोमिना एंड विल गो इन डिटेल अबाउट हाउ द रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट इज एक्चुअली टेकिंग प्लेस इन दैट पर्टिकुलर फिनोमिना सो हियर इन दिस लेक्चर विल डिस्कस अबाउट द रिफ्रैक्शन ऑफ लाइट विच टेक्स प्लेस फ्रॉम अ रेक्टेंगुलर ग्लास स्लैब so here we have a rectangular glass slab with us so let us try to understand the shape of this glass slab so this glass slab is actually a cuboidal shape right it's an object of cuboidal shape and it is made up of it is completely made up of transparent glass now as you can see here there are six rectangular faces of this cuboidal structure right this rectangular glass slab although of different dimensions there are six different faces six different rectangular faces that this glass slab has now what we'll do is we'll pass some light through this glass slab and we'll observe what happens right so we'll pass some light through one of these rectangular faces of this glass slabs and we'll observe what happens so here we have passed some light through one of the faces one of the rectangular faces of this glass slab now if you observe this phenomena in this particular angle this phenomena becomes a little more apparent right we can see that light which was traveling in a straight line path before it entered the rectangular glass slab though it continues to travel in a straight line path it deviates from its original path right once the light enters the glass slab it again starts following a straight line path now when the light comes out of the glass slab it again deviates from its path right but again after coming out of the glass slab it continues to travel in a straight line path now had there been no glass slab we know that the light would have traveled in a straight line path when we put the glass slab in its position the light instead of traveling in a straight line path took a zigzag path though traveling in a straight line in certain segments so now there are two important observations that we can make from this phenomena the first observation is that whenever light was traveling in a single medium be it air or glass it was traveling in a straight line path so here we can see before entering the rectangular glass slab light was traveling only in air right and we can see that light was traveling in a straight line path once it entered the rectangular glass slab we can again see that for the duration in which light was traveling through the glass slab light was traveling in a straight line path once it came out of the rectangular glass slab again we can see that light is traveling only in air and it is traveling in a straight line path so the first important observation that we have made in this phenomena is that when air, when light is traveling in a single medium be it air or glass it is traveling in a straight line path now the second important observation that we can make here is that the bending of light or the change of path of light happens only when light moves from one medium to another medium right here we can see that when light moved from air to glass when it entered the rectangular glass slab changed its path right it bent from its original path when the light was coming out of the rectangular glass slab it again changed its path when it was moving from glass to air right so again one bending happened after that it did travel in a straight line but when it changed the medium again bending of the path of the light happened so this is the second important observation that we can make in this particular phenomena that the bending of light that occurs occurs only when light travels from one medium to the other and it occurs at the interface of these two different mediums so this bending of light that occurs when light travels from one medium to another medium at the interface of these two different mediums is what is called as refraction of light now similar to the observations that we have made to the phenomena of refraction of light multiple other observations have also been made and some laws have been formulated which govern the study of refraction of light these laws are what are known as the laws of refraction so before we get into the laws of refraction before we study about the laws of refraction we'll study about some important terms which will help us throughout that discussion now to study about these terms to under understand these terms we'll take into observation the interface at which refraction is actually happening so in our case we'll take the interface we'll take the face of the rectangular face of the glass slab at which refraction was actually happening so here the 
say that we have directed towards this glass slab the ray the light ray which is traveling towards these this glass slab is incident on the surface in observation right is incident on the rectangular face of the glass slab in other words we can also say that this light ray is falling upon this particular interface right so this ray is what is called as the incident ray now these terms are very similar to these terms are defined in a very similar way to how we define these terms while we are studying about reflection right so we had an incident ray and a reflected ray in reflection so here also we have an incident ray which is the ray which is incident on the surface that we are observing so here the ray pq that we have labeled here pq is the incident ray is called the incident ray now this light ray when it travels into the glass slab it refracts right it changes or it deviates from its original path now this ray which we have labeled here as rs is what is called the refracted ray because this ray is the refracted light which has traveled into the glass slab so this light ray is called as the refracted ray now on this surface if we draw a normal at the point at which this incident ray meets the surface this normal is what is called as the normal to the surface at the point of incidence why do we call this point as the point of incidence the reason why we call this point as the point of incidence is because this is where the incident light incident light ray meets the surface at which refraction is taking place so this point is known as the point of incidence so the normal to this surface to the refractive surface the normal that we draw to this surface at this point is what is called as the normal to the refractive surface now the angle that the incident ray makes with the normal to the surface at the point of incidence is what is called as the angle of incidence similarly the angle which the refracted ray makes to the normal to the surface at the point of incidence is what is called as the angle of refraction so this is very similar to what we studied in reflection right these terms are defined in an exactly similar way so the angle made by the angle made by the incident ray to the normal is called as the angle of incidence which is represented by angle i and similarly the angle made by the refracted ray to the normal is represented by angle r and is known as the angle of refraction so these are all the terms that we should be aware of whenever we are studying about the refraction of light so now let us talk about the various the two different laws of refraction so the first law of refraction is exactly similar to the first law of reflection so the first law of refraction states that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal to the surface at which the refraction is actually taking place at the point of incidence all these three lines they lie in the same plane what this means is that the plane in which the incident ray was traveling after refraction it travels in the same plane it does not deviate out of that plane it does deviate out of its original path but it does not deviate out of the plane in which it was traveling so this is the first law of refraction which tells us that the incident ray the refracted ray and the normal to the surface at the point of incidence all these three lines they lie in the same plane now the second law of refraction states that the sign of the angle of incidence the ratio of the sign of the angle of incidence and the sign of the angle of refraction that is sin i upon sin r this is a constant value for a given pair of mediums so here the two different mediums are air and glass right light was traveling in air and then it entered glass so these are the two different mediums so what the second law of refraction tells us is that whenever there are these two mediums whatever angle the light might be incident on the ratio of the sign of angle of incidence to the sign of angle of refraction is always going to be a constant value for these two medium so this is the second law of refraction of light this is also known as the snell's law of refraction so these are the two different laws of refraction that govern all the study that is done on the phenomena of refraction of light these two laws are the basic principle laws that govern the study of refraction of light so in this lecture we have gone through the phenomena of refraction of light as it happens through a rectangular glass slab we have made some observations and we have also talked about the two laws of refraction that govern the study of refraction of light so in our next lecture we'll talk about another very important concept 
that is related to the phenomenon of refraction of light which is known as refractive index. See you in the next lecture.